Hello and welcome to part three of our video series here dealing with an adiabatic flame temperature. In the last video where we ended was asking the question, how does the heat capacity of any of our reactants depend on the temperature? And so it's in this video that we're going to unpack that now and show the relation between heat capacity and arranging temperature for any of our respective reactants. So here, specifically with part three, we're going to derive the expressions <clears throat> to calculate the ideal gas enthalpy for each species, uh, in each of those species involved in our combustion reactions happening between the natural fuel or the natural gas and, and our methane, ethane, and propane mixing with the air as a function of temperature, showing the ChemCAD expression for the heat capacity and integrating this from the standard state temperature. So again, the heat of formation for our reactants here has been shown at 298.15 Kelvin, so at, at its standard state temperature. But we're gonna show uh, the temperature uh, at, from our ChemCAT expression for the heat capacity and then integrating this from its state at, at the standard state temperature of the 298.15 Kelvin to the desired temperature T, because as the combustion reaction is happening in the flame for our adiabatic flame temperature, we're going to have that large range of temperatures, and we want to again answer the question, how hot is the flame? And so then we're going to write a function to calculate this enthalpy. So that's going to lead us to looking into the ChemCAT expression for our reactants here happening in the combustion reaction. And so the specific equation is going to be chem CAD equation 107, which let's go ahead and look at our physical properties workbook over here. And yeah, type in 107. And there we go. Okay, so equation 107. Now let's go ahead and see what is this set within. And so the reason 107 is what we're what we're concerned with here is that we see here, we're dealing with temperature dependent properties. And that's exactly what we're, what we're trying to solve here and answer the question for is how does our heat capacity depend on the temperature? So here exactly, we're, we're looking at any of the coefficients in how our reactants are dependent on the temperature and what those properties are. And so here's just a list of our, our various things within it. And we see specifically that we're dealing with ideal gas heat capacity. So section three there. Um, and so if we go through and we see our temperature dependent properties for the ideal gas heat capacity, we've got joules over uh, the k mole per Kelvin there, kilomole per Kelvin. And so let's go down and down. Here we go. Here is the equation that we're specifically interested in, which is equation 107. Let's go ahead and, and copy that over here. So ChemCAD equation 107, and that shows, so that Y there, that is the same thing, that is our heat capacity for our reactant. So we'll go ahead and just set that equal there. It's going to have, so we have our list of coefficients. So we've got A, B, C, D, and E here, and the coefficients show up like this in our expression. So we've got A plus B, and the product that of C divided by T and the hyperbolic sine, one over the hyperbolic sine of C over our temperature. And this entire expression is going to be squared plus D and the product between D and E over our temperature, and then one over our hyperbolic cosine. Again, that E over T, and that entire expression is going to be squared. And so here is our heat capacity for our reactants. Now, this specifically is going to be um, dealing with our standard state temperature, but we want to know the, the uh, integral for the whole range of temperature. So anything from its standard state all the way up through whatever the temperature is for the flame and whatever that gets to, we want to know the entire range and the integral of the entire range there. So let's go ahead and take the integral of that now. So we're going to go ahead and take the integral of this expression here. 
and we'll walk through each thing here. So A is just going to be the constant A times temperature once we take the integral of that. So really the, the tricky ones that we have to unpack here for the integrals are going to be this expression and this expression with a constant of B and a constant of D. So let's go ahead and go over to our handy dandy Wolfram Alpha to help us out here. And we're going to start by doing this part of the equation first with the constant of b. So we'll go ahead and put this in and find the integral of this here. So let's see here, we're going to have integral of our coefficient c divided by temperature. This whole expression divided by the hyperbolic sine of c divided by our temperature. Here we go. Now this entire expression is going to be squared. Okay. And then taking the integral of t for temperature. Let's get that name one more time. All right, let's go ahead and plug this through. Okay, so we have our C, coefficient C, and then we've got our hyperbolic cotangent. Let's just go ahead and put that as a hyperbolic, one over the hyperbolic tangent. Put that below. And then that will be of C divided by T. Okay, now let's move on to, so this entire expression is going to have the, the constant B in front of it. And again, this will have A times temperature. And let's just back this up here, our heat capacity uh, as a function of temperature. Now we just have to solve for this expression right here. So we'll go ahead and punch this in now. All right, so we've got the coefficient E divided by temperature divided by one over uh, our co hyperbolic cosine. And then that entire expression will be squared. And taking the integral with respect to temperature. Oops. I gotta put one more parentheses to close that out. Okay, so here is our result for our integral. And so this entire expression will be plus d as our constant multiplied by negative e, Euler's number there, the multiplied by the hyperbolic tangent. And then we've got an e again over t for temperature. So this right here is going to be our function that allows us to calculate the enthalpy because this here shows how the heat capacity is going to be changing with respect to any changes in temperatures for each of our chemical properties that are involved in our combustion reaction. And before we move forward with coding out this entire situation to find the actual temperature of the flame, let's just walk by, walk back a little bit and why this expression was important to solve. So we, um, have our steady state situation, meaning that the enthalpy coming in is going to be the same as the enthalpy coming out, which will be resulting in zero. So our enthalpy coming in equals the enthalpy coming out. So that then leads us to, once we have our stoichiometrics, which we did in part one, we found in part two that with the heat of formation, our change in enthalpy is going to be the whatever whatever reactants chemical property whatever that reactants heat capacity is at the standard state temperature of 298.15 kelvin 
then that multiplied by any changes in temperature here. So if we have a small change in temperature, then our heat capacity can stay constant, and that shows us our change in enthalpy. Um, but here, down here, we for a large range of temperature, we have to take the integral between any changing, any range between enthalpy changes and any range here. And so what we've done here specifically is what is our temperature, uh, well, our starting temperature being 298.15 Kelvin, and then however hot the flame is and gets is going to be our temperature too. And we want to know how has the heat capacity changed with respect to temperature all the way from the temperature starting at 298.15 Kelvin all the way to however hot the flame is. We need to know all the, all the minute changes that happen to the heat capacity along the way with respect to the temperature changes. And that then will know that our overarching enthalpy change is zero. And so if then we can solve for the roots of that, that will then allow us to find our remaining uh, variable to be found is what is the temperature of the flame. And so that is why in this video, part three, we needed to solve, we need to set the heat capacity with respect to temperature and from ChemCAD equation 107 with our uh, different coefficients and how they interact with each other and taking the integral, this is our result. And so in the last video of this series, part four, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and code this out so that we can solve our final thing, which is how hot is the temperature flame for our adiabatic flame temperature. Thank you.